Hello and welcome to the last uh, Librarians of the Citadel episode recap for season seven. We're going to talk about the finale, the dragon and the wolf. Um, so <laughs> we start with the, uh, the, the big conference, them all coming together. And um, I mean, I think all of us knew that when Danny was on the ship, she was going to arrive in her dragons. Have that awesome! Yeah, you know, it was a you know, scene. You know, great show of force. The Unsullied who somehow marched all the way from Castle <laughs> Um That's okay. Uh, and uh, then the Dothraki coming through them. Uh, you know, really kind of highlighted the differences between Danny's two armies too. The really disciplined, the Unsullied, and the Dothraki scheme, mm -hmm. uh, screamers. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, they were in King's Landing preparing for <laughs> the worst with their thousand barrels of pitch that they were going <laughs> to throw over the side. Um, so, again, you know, one of the things that always strikes me when I'm watching is how good the music is. And it was just like the dragon theme when Drogon's coming in and you see a uh, Rhaegal flying in the background. That music is just so good. And, um, yeah, it was, it was really quite the uh, episode for reunions. Mm -hmm. We got Podrick Payne and Tyrion reunited, mm -hmm. Brienne and the Hound, and I loved how um, they talked about Arya mm -hmm. and how the Hound seemed kind of proud when, yeah, yeah. when she mentioned that Arya could take care of herself. Um, we had uh, the Hound in the Mountain. That was... <laughs> <laughs> that was interesting. Um, you know, uh, he says to the Mountain... You know who's coming for you. You've always known this is not how it ends for you. Is that you? Are you coming? <laughs> um, <coughs> so, yeah, it was, it was pretty... They were in the, in the dragon pit, which looks like kind of like an ancient coliseum that has kind of crumbled. And um, I think it might have been. I think it might have been shot. In my, I meant to look that up before, but it looked like it was shot. It was shot somewhere in Spain. I don't know the details, but it does yeah. look like a Roman ruin. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. So, for anybody else who thought it was kind of odd that, like, Podrick Payne didn't stay with Brienne and that Braun just, like, walked, they both mm -hmm. just walked out and had a drink. I guess the reason for that is the actor who plays Braun and the actress who plays Cersei, Lena Headey, they had a relationship years ago before the show even started that ended so volatilely that the the show keeps them apart whenever possible. They, really? They're, they're yeah. never, if, you, if you think back on it, they're never in a scene together. Wow. Really? So a little fat on there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I was like, this is interesting. Why are they leaving? Like, they should be there. You know, and yeah. that I, I went online after the episode, and I was like, oh. <laughs> yeah, so wow. that's... And that's something I never would have really noticed other than that I thought it was, like, so weird that yeah. they were leaving this convocation. Um, but it was I to get that that away. Yeah, it's kind of an interesting little factoid. Mm. Um, so I love the uh, arrival of Drogon, so dramatic. You know, Danny with her show of force. Oh, was really the best part oh of when she when he just lowered her down. Yeah, and she is the real queen. Oh, she <laughs> walked off that serious yeah. face. Yeah. Oh, she was like, I don't know if she was petrified or just like so mad just so like Cersei let out a lot of emotions oh, she did. during that meeting that yeah. we did not expect well yeah. even like the little bit of um, annoyance that she let slide because she was because she was mad about Danny's entrance oh, yeah. we've been here for quite some time they were like, there for like a minute alright <laughs> calm down <laughs> yeah. you, Maybe you, two you, minutes. you've been there for like 60 seconds and you had your own entrance with the mountain and all that so yeah whatever. and that was <laughs> with their dragon. It was the coolest thing. It was pretty cool, and I love the um, the CGI animation of him kind of like slithering down the side yeah. of the Coliseum. That was really well done. Um, and so we get uh, the very first thing that happens is Euron starts. Uh, you know, Tyrion starts trying to you know have the rational discussion, and Euron just starts like immediately threatening Theon. But I thought what it was interesting about. That was not um, when Euron started in Ontarian. That's when Jamie and Cersei were like, "Euron, sit down." <laughs> and I was like, "That's that's kind of interesting." Like, yeah. Tyr you know, Tyrion's their enemy, but even right. Cersei was like, "Sit down. I'll make have the mountain make you sit down." Like, you know, yeah. we're not here for your nonsense. Yeah, we're and, trying to be diplomats here. Yeah. <laughs> um, and you know, they brought in the White, 
And I loved how the white went directly for Susan. <laughs> and she looked really scared. She looked yeah. terrified. Yeah. Oh, she looked yeah. absolutely terrified. And, and they all were. You didn't see, like, and maybe her guards, or her king's guard, or queen's guard, rather, were so, like, oh my god, what is this that they did? But nobody made a move to get between her and the thing, you know, and, and the hound pulled it off, like, right at the last minute. But, like, everybody was just kind of, like, standing in place. Like, nobody was, like... I think maybe that was more of, like, shock. I, I think that's what well, it was, yeah. too. They were yeah. also yeah. shocked at what yeah. they had seen, that yeah. they were just yeah. like, whoa. Like, yeah. 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 Even the uh, undead monster who stands behind her all the time. Was... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh. And it was very... Uh, it was very Walking Dead to me that whole that whole uh, you yeah, know they cut him in half dead. and both of his parts are like crawling yeah. away. It was and a nice demonstration. It was a really good demonstration. I love how to how Quiburn <laughs> went right to like with his curiosity picking up the hand. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the Cersei at first agreed for to a, a truce, and then John brought up that yes. he yes. he yeah. was. Uh, Honor, yeah, had pledged himself to Daenerys, but I, I was kind of confused with this, uh, the way this went down, because I didn't feel like Cersei was asking John to bend the knee. She was kind of asking him just to stay in the north, or was he saying he can't obey that order because yeah. he has to take orders it's from Danny? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 So, um, so then we got this great scene um, that I didn't even really feel like. I, I didn't know I needed it until I had it, which was Tyrion and Cersei together. You didn't know you needed it? I didn't know I needed that until we had it. <laughs> <laughs> I had it in it. Um, no, no, it was, it was great. Uh, you know, the, them, you know, coming together. I loved her, you know, inability or, like, unwillingness to really call for him to be murdered, even though she'd been saying for the past, like, three or four seasons that that was all she wanted was his death. Right, um, right. I loved the, uh, you know, his kind of, you know, admission that he really loved his niece, niece and nephew, and he was yeah. really upset that they had passed well, away. Of the children. Well, he's always been saying that. He's been, you know, for a while, it's been less solid. It's like, she was innocent. Why would you, you know, he's... Well, yeah. that was, even though Cersei was so angry with him, that was why he sent Marcella to Dorne. Yeah. yeah. He really thought, I mean, that was how he presented it, but it seemed genuine. You yeah. Know, that he felt that was a way to protect her. her. Yeah. 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 And he couldn't have predicted <laughs> what would happen with the mountain and Oberyn and no. then the, the Dorne need for vengeance and... I, I thought it was really interesting how Cersei blames him not only for Marcella's death, but for Tommen's death, for which she is like she yeah, is pretty much directly responsible. Yeah, that was, yeah, that was like it, that was like a little bit too much. Maybe he, because he she felt like she wouldn't have been as vulnerable to the Tyrells with her father alive, which is true. She probably wouldn't have been, um, but she you know she let Tommen kill himself, and then after it was like kind of blase about it. Uh, he didn't you know he was. He was going to betray us or whatever. Like, but she was, no, she was responsible. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, and, but then it was like, you know, they drink wine together and when he finds out that she's pregnant. But then I thought it was interesting that he finds out that she's pregnant and then we go off camera and then suddenly Cersei's walking into the, uh, uh, the Coliseum right. again. And I was like, okay, so what did we not see that yeah. just happened? Well, then there? it was a little weird at the end of the episode, too. Something's yeah. going on. Something's going on with Tyrion. I felt that way, too. I was well, like, I love Tyrion. Is... Nothing, I don't think anything, like, suspicious. I don't think anything, like... I, I don't know. I feel like they've been kind of building us towards that. This Because all of Danny's accusations towards him are, you don't want to hurt your family. You don't want to really see your family get hurt. I, but I but think, I think we're supposed to think now that with the promise of like a, another niece or nephew on the way, that maybe he really doesn't want to see his family get hurt. No, I don't think he wants to see his family hurt, but I don't think he's going to do anything to betray Danny. I don't think he's... I think they're also trying to play up the Tyrion's in love with her angle, though. Well, too. yeah, and, that was, and yeah. so now that that yeah. now I'm like a little nervous with is, are his loyalties going to be a little conflicted where he has? I, I don't know. Um, it's, I interpreted the scene at the end more like Tyrion was a stand-in for the audience. Oh, I, I interpreted it as he was a giant creep. No, I felt I felt I more like it was, a creep. it was sort of giving. 
you know, giving giving sort of the audience perspective. I mean, you know, I, I mean, because that's not that's not like a, a thing that they use that often, though. We don't usually need like somebody to stand no, for it us. Was in the scene. Scene. It was an unusual scene. It was an unusual scene. I thought, I thought it was keying us into some conflict that's going to come up. I think, yeah, yeah that's, that's what I thought the too. The three of them. That's what I thought too. It was I, a key I, for just, I just more of like his heart was broken. He wasn't being a creep. He was creeping. no. He had he was just happened to be around and he like saw him away. <laughs> and he and he, he, and he, he, he lingered in the hall he outside their door. Okay. What's your place in his position? I don't think I'd want to overhear that if I were to <laughs> I think that'd be a little creepy. <laughs> I don't think he was necessarily but like trying to listen no one, in. I think he was just except being the exception of Bran. No one, no one except Bran and Sam know how really creepy. Yeah, the and other level of creepy yes. is. Yes. <laughs> Get really old, is. that's not creepy. It's different times, different places. <laughs> <laughs> People are marrying now for a time. They lived in America not too long ago. But that's that's still happens. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, we had a, a little a great interaction with, uh, let's get back to Danny and John earlier in the episode where they're talking about the downfall of the Targaryen line. Each other then. Yeah, they're talking about, she's talking oh. about like how the Targaryen line's downfall was when they decided to domesticate the dragons mm-hmm. and how like trying to rein that power in made, made the dragons smaller, Small, made them smaller. smaller. And John's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and like and Danny's going, Oh, thank you, but you know, just an episode before I was like you small. You're too little for me. <laughs> and then and then uh yeah, John you know, the the Targaryen line hasn't seen its end. I thought it was uh John brought up something that I feel like a lot of us have felt for a long time since season one where Danny's like, I can't have children and he's like, Who told you that? Yeah. Like, the witch who murdered my husband. Maybe she's not a great source of information. <laughs> Because um, you never know. Maybe Dariana Harris just was, you know, not going to have children or yeah, whatever. I know. So it's, um, I think we're getting into, like, they're beating us over the head with progeny for John. I mean, Sir Jorah on the, yeah. on the buddy walk from the wilderness brought it up. And now again. So... I think, yeah, which is, it's, I, I don't think we'll see, like, a baby. I think we'll get a pregnancy because we only got to do a dragon egg. <laughs> yeah. She just keeps saying the dragons are her only children, yeah. so. <laughs> um, well, maybe this is three. This, is the three this, this might be the third yeah. one, yeah. This might be the um, third one. So, uh, this <laughs> this was a very a very satisfying episode, I think, for another reason, and some of that was the uh, stuff that happened in Winterfell. Very. Yes. So the first season yes, scene we had at Winterfell. So, so cool. good. So good. Uh, so, so the first scene we have are um, Sansa and Littlefinger in a very dark room where he's like kind of like in the shadows, kind of half covered, and, and he's definitely being creepy. Yeah, you uh, can tell. You can tell from the start Sansa wasn't actually being serious. But she was no. like, no, she you was, felt, yeah, yeah it, 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 it felt like her wheels were turning. Definitely, yeah. and, and I, I just think at, for one second it, to betray her sister, I knew the whole time she she never would have betrayed. She Arya. never trusted no. him. Well, and I think um, yeah, she hasn't trusted him for a while. Right? Yeah. Ever yeah. since the Boltons, or even before yeah. that, I think she was oh. like, uh, he just threw my aunt out of the moon door. <laughs> 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 this is not a man to, to trust. Fair, I really was happy when he did that. Oh, I mean, nobody was upset <laughs> yeah. about it, but um, <laughs> but yeah, and he was. Uh, you know, basically trying to convince Sansa, Sansa she should take over uh, the North because John had the audacity to bend the knee without like consulting anybody or anything like that. Um, right. And that I I thought that advice to uh, think of what everyone's worst motive might be and then work backwards from that. Like, how do their actions support this motive? How do what they say? That's a really paranoid way of living. That is such a paranoid <laughs> way of living. And it's like, you can make anybody believe anything. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and it's interesting because he fe- it, it really does come across like he feels like he's playing Sansa like a harp in this scene. Like, like he's playing really, him. Yeah. And, and the whole, um, even like, he's like smiling. Oh, he's yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, oh, she's, she's, she's putty in my hand. Yeah. Kind of, yeah. And, and um, the whole idea that Arya would want to do this so that she could be Lady of Winterfell. Like, because Arya's always been a character who's been after power. That makes sense. You know? <laughs> 
like Littlefinger does not know these uh, players at all, yeah, and exactly. that's his. Uh, that's really definitely his downfall. So um, the next scene we have in Winterfell is, is Sansa telling the guards to summon Arya to the Great Hall. And we get this great kind of fake out. I mean, because it looks that like the they're best. calling. It was a really good, Sorry. like, you know, because it Lord looks like they're they trying to. They oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, Bran was sitting at the table, so I was like, all right, this does, this can't be about Arya with Bran sitting at the table. No, I didn't and, think for a second um, it was. I like that. Do you, are you really sure? Do you really want to do this? And Sansa just, yep, yeah, let's do this. Lord Baelish. It was great. Yeah. Oh, was and Arya was like, you heard her. <laughs> and and like, that was like my, my best Stark family you dynamic in so long. Yeah. Yeah. My sister asked you a question. Or like, yeah, was like, yeah. Oh. Like, Finally, like that's done. what we had been waiting for. Oh, from, absolutely. From their, you know, yeah, that was reunion. Good payoff. It was yeah. good payoff. For and and Ron too, because he's like saying, um, you know, no one saw it. He's like, I saw. I'm <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> weird, like, like, yeah, so like, nobody knows that I betrayed Ned. He's like, you told him not to trust you while he held a knife to his throat. <laughs> and I was like, how do you know? Oh, and then I hear um, Peter Baelish when he's on like the ground, like crying. Oh, like, yeah, that whole that was terrible thing. acting. It was, oh, it was so oh bad. I thought it was actually good because I thought, like, I'm like, you know, this guy is like so weak, this character, he's always so composed and finally he's losing and he sees that there's no way out. I thought he conveyed that really well. I was I felt it. I felt his like his, you know, sense of like, oh my gosh, I can't talk my way out of this, I can't ski my way out of this, like his desperation. I, I mean, it was great because it was like everything yeah. he'd done up to that point. Yeah. It was like Sansa called him on each and every little thing mm -hmm. he'd done since season one. Yeah, it was yeah. it was great. You, yeah. you saw the conflict between the Starks and the Lannisters. You yeah, started, you know the, all of you, it. You you murdered the Aaron so you can take the Vale. You, yeah, and and um, I loved the. I actually really did like part of his pleading when he said, "I loved your mother," and then Sansa's like, "Yeah, you betrayed her." Yeah. And he's like, mm -hmm. and "I loved you." And yeah, you betrayed me. I was like, go Sansa. <laughs> and then Arya, the executioner. That was over. That was done really quickly. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Like, you couldn't even say it again. It was just, like, done. Um, so, yeah, that was, like, a lot of really, you know, last, I think last episode, they, they did kind of, especially with the scene with the faces, because it was, like, what audience are you playing this for? But now it seems pretty clear that maybe the three Stark children had some off-screen interaction in the Godswood after, you know, uh, Bran handed Arya the dagger a couple oh, episodes yeah, ago. Yeah, and they, they planned this because it doesn't, it, I mean, that makes perfect, it makes sense now. Except for that one scene with the faces is like, who was, who's that for? <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean, it, it really did have a um, good payoff, and I think... Uh, do you think Arya's going to go around someday and wear his face? <laughs> Who I was she, wondering. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know what... Um, maybe if it, maybe she uh, sent her to King's Landing to take out Cersei yeah. um, in the face of Peter Baelish. That might work out. Um, Showwriters, we have a plan for you. <laughs> um, so... The, uh, we had some Theon stuff. Like he, we had barely any Theon stuff this whole season, but we had a little bit of Theon stuff. This uh, and uh, yeah, I think he was, was, we were we were trying to give him his thing. Yeah, you know, and, and I thought um, you know the conversation between him and John was was really good, and I actually thought it had more implication for John though than it did for Theon because he's you are both yeah, a, you're both a Stark and a Greyjoy. It's like, oh, this is gonna come to play later when John is both a Stark okay. and a Targaryen, you know. But, so, okay. but um, and then we had the fight on the beach. So, to, so to me, this was you know, this episode was great. An hour twenty minutes of mostly great it. stuff. But this whole Theon stuff, I was like, oh, I don't, I don't know, know if I need that. Greyjoy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, I don't feel like I need resolution yeah. in the Iron Islands. Yeah, I, don't, I, I mean, I'd like I to know think, what happened in the yard. But, but now that we know. Later on, when we find out Euron is out there heading to Essos, and now, of course, Theon with his minuscule fleet, but if he goes to the Iron Islands and finds out that's not where Euron went, I think it's setting up yeah. something for next season. He'll, he'll have, probably have an easier time, one would hope, unless there's like 
uh, some kind of magic time travel scenario in which Yoron goes all the way to Essos and picks up the Golden Company and comes all the way back. Yes. <laughs> and, um, and he should have an easier time getting Yara. And now I can sort of kill Theon off. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he'll die yeah. saving Yara. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he's sort of been restored. He's, he's completed his arc. I just don't understand how he won that fight. He's, <laughs> we, all, we all know how he won that fight. <laughs> I mean, yeah, he was, but still, the guy could have just stopped. But he I think he, yeah. he had no idea why it wasn't working. It was like it's like when you're like your remote's run out of batteries and you're just like wait. But I thought they all, knew. I thought they all knew. I don't think that they did too. I, I don't know if that was like a complete that. like no, that the whole everything was gone was the whole. Uh, I don't know. They were making fun of him, and the second he did it and he smiled, he should have been like, oh yeah, that's right. This guy's been chopped. So, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think maybe he thought that there was something there, or maybe these were stories. Just, but one, just one more blow to the head, and he would have been. Oh dead, yeah. So yeah. I and then it was like Theon just had to knock him around a couple times, and he was incapacitated. So it was kind of like, eh. but so yeah, I think that was probably the weakest stuff of this entire episode, which was so good. Um, another great moment of payoff, I thought, for the audience was uh, Cersei. And, oh, it's not doing it. It's not showing up. But I don't know if that means... Our audio might be there still. Yeah. Can you see us? <laughs> we have one viewer, Meredith. Can you see us on screen? <laughs> Meredith. <laughs> I just checked my phone. It's frozen. And, and, yeah. Oh, Technical difficulty. Right, yeah. Do you want to restart it? Um, yeah. It's, it's hard to tell. All right. Oh, she can see us. Oh, oh, okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. So it's just our iPad. All right. Sorry. 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 Um, so another great moment, I think, of like payoff for the fans was the scene where Cersei and Jamie, where Jamie is in the, uh, you know, the uh, King's Landing war room, organizing the troops, trying to make a plan to go north, and she comes in and basically calls him stupid for actually believing that she was going to fight this threat. Oh. Because yeah. he's a good person now and wouldn't think to do that. Right. And, and, and I think, you know, they both saw the severity of the threat and they're coming at it from completely different He's not going to her now. Oh, no, no, no. He's oh. gone. He's well, gone. But I think yeah. the other thing yeah. is, I, he really seemed shocked that, that she, she had so completely betrayed yeah. him. Yeah. I mean, she, so she's playing, you know, the Starks and the Targaryens, but I, I think... She's playing too. Yes. Yeah. Yes, that's and she's holding that baby against him and everything, and she's like, "Well, I don't need you anymore. I have another one coming." It's like, yeah, and, and and it was, you know, she's really holding it against him that he had a conversation with Tyrion, which he was arranged without his knowledge, and yeah. you just had a conversation right. with Tyrion, and it's really, yeah, but she's she really she's does. Way gone. She's way gone. Yeah, and she no, seems to I, really. I, I think that that. She that's... just can't see the actual threat that's coming. Where he I think can. I know. I, I think, think she, she does can. see it. She yeah. does see it. She just interprets it differently. Yeah, yeah. She, yeah we, so she, she, she thinks this means we need to hunker down and protect all the Lannisters and let the Starks and Targaryens kill themselves fighting this threat, and then we will take over the kingdom. Right, but I, no, but, but I, what, she, what I'm saying is she doesn't see the threat that that Jamie does when he says one one of them's going to win. It's either them and they're going to kill us, or then. You know, the Targaryens yeah. and... Uh, the but she also knows that she has the Golden Company coming. She's not afraid of that. Right. Yes, so yes, she figures it out. Yeah, she's, she's having an opposite reaction where she's like, we need to think of us, Lannisters only. Well, and he's having a reaction of like, reaction. this is not, you know, this is the world we're talking about. This that's time. always been her reaction. Yeah. That's everything. But, but us. What, so she played both of her brothers, though. Oh, yeah. Because Tyrion, unless, unless Tyrion is suspecting, which you never know, but Tyrion has made a lot of really dumb decisions all season. Yeah, yeah he's had a hard time this season yeah. trying to anticipate yeah, what his siblings are doing. He has not been do. as brilliant as... Not as what we are, but he's never really been a military man. He's a really good political man. Mm -hmm. um, but he was never had like the military training that even like Jamie would have had. That's true. And Cersei, I think, has gone on her way to try to teach herself some of this Tyrion stuff. just needs to become the father of democracy. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I think I think a lot of us have been waiting for Jamie to finally have that kind of aha moment with Cersei. I, I was a little 
nervous for Jamie for a moment when she nods at the mountain and he kind of looks at her and oh, I thought he was about to die. die. No, I thought he was about to die. Story, yeah. But then I was like, thought to myself, she just didn't kill Tyrion, but now she's going to kill Jamie? Like, really? <laughs> but, um, yeah, they just let him go. And I think he's had a couple of aha moments along, but this one was just the one that was like... I think he's, this, had, oh, he's had a lot had, of aha yeah. moments. Yeah, I think this was the one that was finally like a bridge too far. Like, this was finally the one that was like, all right, there's this, there's nothing we can yeah, do. Yeah, I, I want to, I, I, you know, going to keep my word. I said I'm going to go and I'm going to do this. I think, yeah. and there's a lot of characters, like even with um, Theon, where they're like, you know, I want to be the honest do the right thing, yeah. and same with Jamie. It's like, I said that I would go up north and fight, and that's what I'm going to do, and I'm not going to not keep my word. So It's like all the shady think, characters. I think actually it. that was maybe, I don't know, I mean, who knows why writers do what they do, but the um, bit with Jon Snow, like, I can't tell a lie, it was so George Washington. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but I think that that had resonance, you know, the people there were like, They well, saw Jon Snow do it, and now they want to be like this man. Yeah. Like, yeah. Jamie, Theon, yeah. they all... It, it's kind of funny because you see a lot, I felt, like in the you know beginning of the series, throughout the series, you see a lot of people uh, criticize Ned Stark for being too honorable. And then you end up with these characters like Theon, who've done horrible things, and Jamie, who's done questionable things, who end up like wanting to be more like right. that, more like, you know, be that honorable person. Well, it's because Jamie's like, look at the alternative, you know, my crazy sister. Like, well, I think, I think having, I mean, it really, even though it seemed like such a stupid plot point going up and plucking that white out of the wilderness, yeah. um, it, it did, it does help see a shift if they're going to try and make these people more honorable. I mean, it's a little Fair. like, yeah, well, like, well, this might really be the apocalypse. Maybe I should be a better person. <laughs> <laughs> right, if I'm going to meet the seven, <laughs> I should do so with a, a clearer conscience. Um, so we got, after this, we got an excellent scene with uh, Sam arriving in Winterfell. We see Sam and uh, Bran together, which was so good because... Um, the pieces I'm just, of the puzzle came mm-hmm. together. But even like beyond that, like the comedy between <laughs> Sam and Bran, I'm the free eyed raven. I don't, I don't know, know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see that in a vision? And then Bran hands holds up a scroll. <laughs> it, was, it was just, they were really great together. Actually, I think Bran was more of a human. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, so too, yeah he, he was. And even, you know, with um, being at the table with his sisters to yeah. defend his family, like, he, he did seem more kind of brannish than he has. Less computer. Less computer. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and also, he seemed troubled. He seems concerned about getting this, you know, knowledge about John's identity to yeah. him on a human level. Yeah. So, you know, more, than, more than they've allowed him to express this season, but Right. I hope John gets to find out. I hope something doesn't happen. I, I, I mean, as long I think as long as they make it to Winterfell, then John will find out. If, if there's something that throws them off is their there, course in the ship, news are bad news. I don't, I don't know. But I mean, that. So what a great uh, payoff for fans who have been waiting for this revelation for like 20 years because it's something so strongly hinted at in the first book. And um, that people had been speculating about for a very long time. I mean, we've known I mean, for we've, a long time. I mean, like they they said it last season, but like to actually come out and have it like all together, like and, and to have um, Rhaegar on screen, Rhaegar who looms so heavy over this mm-hmm. whole story, right. you know, to finally have him on screen. Oh, and to see in, um, Liana. Liana. Liana looking so pretty and they were so in love. Aww. So, but how, um, how was it like, a, it was like a little, um, uh, it threw me off a little bit because I was looking at him wondering, why does he look so much like Viserys? I know. <laughs> yeah. And I, yeah. But I think, um, you know, they're, they're supposed to be brothers, but I think it made sense though because it made it look like Viserys was trying to emulate Rhaegar with the same haircut, you know. Like well, they all have, they're, they're all sober. They're all yeah, but I mean, it was the exact same way that Rhaegar, and I'm sure that the series was just, like, trying to emulate his, like, princely good brother. So that it made, it made sense, and I think I saw on uh, Twitter and online afterwards, people were like, was that Harry Lloyd? Did they get the same actor? But it was a, it was a different actor. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been, you know, nobody wants to see him back on screen. <laughs> Sorry, Harry Lloyd. 
Um, but no, it was really it was really sweet the the wedding yeah. scene, and then the um, we kind of transitioned into the scene where Bran was talking over the Danny and and John love scene, um, <laughs> acknowledge you know coming up with the the revelation while they're together that uh, she is his aunt. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it was really kind of. I think that for a lot of casual viewers, they didn't. They maybe never picked up on that before. I mean, I think a lot of casual viewers really did need that kind of like hit over their head, and like this was definitely like a scene like where you know people who maybe didn't pick up on it the whole time like will now like now people, you definitely people know. Aren't as into it as the librarians and Yeah, you know, um, now you know like. She is his aunt. <laughs> I think everyone's known. Even no, the no, no, there's no, really no that. Yeah, yeah I, 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 even like my father has watched through this se- series like two or three times, and up until last week, he still didn't know that. They, I mean, so there's. How did you miss that? Didn't they have ancestry I'm back sorry. then? Oh, no, they didn't have yeah. ancestry.com. No. There was no genealogy they department at their local libraries. <laughs> um, we do have a great genealogy collection at this library. <laughs> but yeah, they yeah. they did have that in Westeros, you know. Um, it was a big secret. So yeah, no. So there are a lot of casual viewers that really just didn't get that. I mean, well, I, well, John is the wolf and the dragon. Yeah, so. yeah. So he is the and I hope you know I predicted that in one of our discussions. I said, remember we said who's going to know if it was real marriage? And I said, well, that big pile of things that they've just handed to Sam. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And it was it was kind of because we did have in a previous episode yeah. where um, Gilly mispronounced his name, and called him Regger. <laughs> they were so Sam about. was paying attention. So Sam was paying attention. So that's good. Um, but yeah, I, I love the uh, you know the Roberts Rebellion was built on the line. We we found out uh, John's real name is Aegon Targaryen, which I did see a lot of people were upset about afterwards because. Uh, there was already an Aegon Targaryen. Rhaegar already had a son named Aegon Targaryen. However, Aegon would have been murdered before John was born. And it Rhaegar... Would have been, I was confused. Yeah, no, he, I, he, he would have been murdered because uh, they had already taken King's Landing and Aegon was killed during the sack of King's okay. Landing okay. because Ned leaves King's Landing to go to Dorne to get his sister after they, after they sack it. So Aegon was already killed by the mountain at that time. And Rhaegar was already dead at that time, too, which means that Lyanna had the authority in naming Aegon, which means, right. you know, it probably wasn't Rhaegar being like, let's have two, a- you know, two Aegons. It, it was probably Aegon, you know, he probably spoke to her about the prince that was promised in the prophecy, and she just chose it as what she thought was an appropriate name. Although I would have loved to see him be named Aemon for Aemon Targaryen, the uh, Maester Aemon from the Wall. But yeah, so the, so for people who were upset that there were two Aegons, which are the opposite of the casual viewers, the more serious viewers, the baby Aegons only name, I'm um, only mentioned like a handful of times. So my question is, when John hears this news, is he going to take up his rightful name, or will he still he continue to call himself? I know. I no. to keep the back of the I think he'll still. I think he'll still, I think he'll still identify as a Stark. I mean, no, of course. Well, that's why they had that. Yeah. No, no, no. Will he actually say my name is Aegon? Like that's what my mother named me. Now I know. Or will he just be oh, I'm John? Uh, yeah. I think he'll probably still feel like he'll probably still want people to call him John. Yeah. He'll probably still feel like that's his identity. But I think it's going to really fulfill something for him to find out about his parents, just because he's always yeah. he's always wondered about his mother. Of you know, he always tried to talk to uh, Ned about his mother and never, you know, was able to. Um, so I, I think this is going to Ned had just told him, I, you know, but he would have been in great danger. He was yeah. he would have been in huge danger. Of course, we never had a murderous Robert. Still was Robert was still trying to kill Danny. Yeah, from a continent yeah. away. Yeah. I, I I remember I, I started watching this again a couple weeks ago with my mom because she just tuned in this season. So I started a couple of it over with her, and she was like, "Why didn't Ned just tell Catelyn?" The, like the truth about it all, and I was like, that could have had so many implications. Yeah, so many ramifications. Like, I mean, he would have to make sure that Catelyn told nobody. Yeah, yeah. And I think it was one of those things that he was probably afraid to even say out loud for the fear of like this baby might. You know, I promised my sister I would keep him safe, and this baby might. 
be in danger, this child would be in danger if anybody ever finds out his lineage. Like, Robert was intent on wiping out the dog of the Targaryen yeah. line. It wouldn't have mattered. He would have said that it was a baby born of rape, even though we all know it wasn't. He would have, you know, it would it would have been that he would yeah, just take it. Yeah, if any I understand, yeah. but... And, and, I mean, it would have solved a lot of um, problems for Ned's home life if he had <laughs> um, come forward with this information, but I, I think, uh, you know, he was so afraid of the threat that... Well, yeah. 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 No, it's actually another feather in Ned's honorable cap. <laughs> yeah, really, it is. <laughs> um, that he would sacrifice his, his marriage, basically, right. to yeah. protect this child, yeah. Um, the, but, yeah, that whole... Uh, he's the rightful heir to the Iron Throne, you know, uh, right? Like, really? Like, so now the entire audience should know well, he's we're all on the same page. Yes. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Sorry. <laughs> but, but uh, I mean, that really does kind of put in, you know, our questions about, well, what will this mean when Danny finds out that John's the rightful heir of the, of the Iron Throne? And I think when we uh, saw them talking about the Targaryen line and the Dragon Pit and how close they come become and how much they respect each other, she might be kind of cool with it. Like, oh, I think she'd be excited. I, I think she'd be like, now we can rule together. Mm-hmm. We can. Yeah. yeah. I think um, she would. She would enjoy that. Oh yeah, she's Um. So well, we had. I know. I'm. I really don't. I also feel like we're not being set up for a happily ever after. Maybe a baby, but you know, because um, also in the march through the wilderness, the what's his name, Beric, who's been Beric Dondarrion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I told John last week we're not going to have joy. We're just here to save people. So yeah. I do wonder if John is going to die. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I don't know if John will die, but I'm, I'm sure somebody will. <laughs> it might be Dan. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Well, if he gives her a baby, she's going to have to come to terms. Like, I don't think they would kill her off giving her a baby. I think they might kill Cersei think, off giving her a baby. Yeah. Ooh, but I think, plot twist. <laughs> I think if they were to kill either John or Danny off now at this point, knowing that she has the potential to you know, yeah. carry a child, they would kill him off. Unless I, he just put a baby in her right now. Right, that's what I mean. Yeah, yeah, if, he, if, he, yeah. if he gave her a baby now, he and die. they killed him off, right. yeah. and yeah, she lasted die. with the baby. Yeah, no. I mean, cause it, it feels no, like if they, if they make it to the end, well, it, it, they are possibly the end game couple. Like they yes, yes, yeah. yes. But the, it, it also seems like, not that it would be too easy, but it's, it's I think we've been set up uh, for a lot of uh, heartbreak in this show, mm-hmm. a lot of like we know the characters are vulnerable. I think you know the next six episodes, whenever we get them, if they'll be in twenty eighteen or twenty nineteen, we will probably have you know major character deaths every episode. Yeah. Like you know it, it's gonna it's gonna be like you know a major like The Walking Dead. Yeah, it, it's it's gonna be like everybody is just taken out. You know, it's not. Like so, I he's gonna go. So is is Tormund dead now? Is that... Okay, so I think that's the cliffhanger that was supposed yeah. to be. So because I was I was told or not I was told or I read that people had said that it would end on a cliffhanger. And I think the cliffhanger is what the it, did Tormund make it? Yeah. And I did turn to to my boyfriend at the end of it, and be like, wait a minute, did he get off? <laughs> no way he survived. Yeah. But, you know, I was like, did he did he run to the other thing? Is he? Is he okay? Because it looks like the whole section of wall went down. Oh, yeah. From yeah. Along. yeah. So, um, <gasps> which okay? Can we talk about the ice dragon? Yes. And yeah. the noises he was making. Yeah. Just the fact that they had like the the you know I don't know, dragon scream, but his sounded like like a broken. It was worse. Yeah. And yeah. the holes in his yeah. wings, yeah. and then the, and the weird way he moved, which was like yeah. not really. It was like a. It was, yeah, it was not like his, the way they, they move when they're alive. I just like the noise he was making. I mean, like that kind of yeah. detail right there just got me because it was like this. Like, yeah, I know. It was gross. Awful. Yeah, it was. It was really upsetting. And um, the Night King is a dragon rider. Uh, and uh, yeah, that blue ice fire. Yeah. Not sure what it was. Worked on the wall. It, whatever it was, it took. It, was it just maybe like a blast of magic was it just because uh, it it doesn't make sense that he breathed fire to me because right. oh, fire kills ice. the whites 
was it? That was just I, ice. I, I think that was, it so was cold. I, it was just a blast of ice, ice yeah. against ice, and it just completely like, shattered. Yeah, it. Yeah. it was just so strong, and it yeah. was just it was like knives, you know, like steel. And stuff. Yeah. I mean, he had to do a few passes before he got the wall to crumble. Yeah. Um, but. Uh, yeah, I thought, I mean, we knew it was going to come down because Dolores Ad is the, the Lord Commander now. Before Ned left, he said, don't let the wall fall down. So we knew, <laughs> we knew before uh, John left, he said, yeah. So we knew that it was going to, you know, if, if it was going to happen to any Lord hey, Commander, hey, it was going to be Dolores Ed. And there was no way that they could have stopped that. You know, it, but it, that also really kind of, it was kind of upsetting because it was like, well, would they have been able to get through the wall without a dragon? And would they have gotten a dragon if they didn't have that plan to go get that white? Did they seal their own fate by? Right. Oh yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Yeah. Um, was there was there any plan? Was it worth <laughs> <white waters? laughs> to get the white so that you know Cersei could see? I mean, at least Daenerys saw. They didn't yeah. need to. They didn't need Daenerys to be able to see, but I mean, it didn't even work. Cersei's not even on their side. Yeah. She made oh, we're gonna call our banners, but well, she's gonna call our banners. Two kings no, landing. <laughs> but, but but Daenerys hadn't really been convinced. Right. And yeah. all those people they don't show where the rest of the Lannister army is going, but they've I wonder if they're still gonna be meeting Jamie. I mean, yeah. They might there's follow Jamie's command. They yeah, might Yeah. So I think that even though it seems, you know, like it was a total bust, there's definitely there there's definitely ups. Yeah. yeah, I mean, and they definitely um, to me when I was wa watching that, I was like, oh my gosh, with this with this ice dragon, with this uh, you know never ending supply of soldiers, they are so overpowered now. They can just sweep right through. Yeah, uh, anyone they, they kill, they can just start to fight. Exactly. Yeah. Like, yeah, and yeah. It's, and if they bring the dragons into the fight at all, they could just spear them <gasps> down like they did. With I never thought we know that the dead can come back to life on our side, like John. What if we've got the Lord of Light coming in and <laughs> taking all of the dead ones and turning them back into the living? I don't know if that's how the Lord of Light works. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have enough. We, go. we don't have enough red priests for that. <laughs> And it's like a long lengthy process. The, the night king only has to go like this. <laughs> um, no, I, it, it it did seem to me that I was like, like they they just look like they're they're doomed. And he could have easily have if, had he known to do this, or if he knows to do this, the night king could have just gone right to Winterfell and just blown them all away with that ice dragon because you know he could have just gone on ahead. I know that. Gosh, they'll be in Winterfell in no time. Oh yeah, yeah, they will be. John's gonna make it back there. I hope so. Before he gets there, before the. Yeah, I mean, we don't know. Um, we don't know how time is gonna work in the next season. No, <laughs> <Yes. Faster than laughs> no we don't know. We, I mean, it's always. I I did hear that the episodes are all gonna be about an hour and a half long. Uh, we, I don't believe they've even started filming yet because they have to because everything's happening in winter now that they're actually waiting for winter to film where before they would be filming kind of like in the summer um, so I, I mean if they haven't even started filming yet and we're getting an hour and a half per episode which is what nine hours of television or is it is a lot of how many episodes six, six. Oh, six. only six so it, I mean I would hope it's not 2019, but to wait so two years. It, it's looking that way. I mean, that if they'll probably start filming in like December. Mm. Should we, um, when we ask everyone's favorite scene, should we all say what their favorite scene from the whole uh, season was too? Sure. You want to start? Uh -huh. Oh my god. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we gotta wrap it up anyway. So. Okay. All right. So. Favorite scene from this episode was obviously when Danny came swooping in on her dragon and Cersei's face. That was great. Um, favorite scene from the whole season is when John called Danny his queen. So that was sweet. And in the last, not this one, but the one before that, that episode. Yeah. Liz? Um, I hadn't thought in the big picture, but I actually really liked the scene where um, Jamie sees the light. And and because I really do like Jamie, and um, and I was really happy that finally he's walked out on mm -hmm. Cersei. So so I 
out of a lot to pick from, and I can't possibly say my favorite one though. I guess my queen was pretty. Yeah, that was <laughs> pretty yeah. it. Um, favorite from the episode is Little Finger's Bath. Oh my yeah. God. yeah. Just not. A, I, I, I've been waiting for that death for the whole season. Yeah. Um, just that, but also just Arya and Sansa, like seeing that they are good and on good terms, especially their their scene, which we didn't talk about at the very end. Too. I was gonna say that. Mm-hmm. Sansa finally yeah. said, you know, that the, 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 the packs the packs yeah. yeah. And they act like sisters. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so I love that, and yeah, favorite scene is John Bennett. Yeah, I think. Um, you know, all the um, R plus L equals J stuff, or actually, should I say R plus L? On the bridge, when they were talking after the little finger death, and they had like this really like sisterly kind of talk where um, Arya says, Oh, that's the nicest thing you've ever said to me. And she's like, Don't get used to it because you're still strange and annoying. And it was like, yeah, that feels more authentic than all the other scenes of you. Um, and, and they, they get the, the Pat survives thing, and that's, that was really um, touching. It makes me hope that you know, we, we do get the Stark children surviving to you know, the next six episodes. But a lot of stuff's probably going to happen at Winterfell. So, um, and my favorite, I guess my favorite scene from the whole season probably is John bending the knee. That was just such a beautiful, um, beautiful scene. Um, so, all right, that's it for the Librarians of the Citadel season seven discussion. You know, if you have any like crazy theories about season eight, we'd love to hear them in the comments. Uh, we will watch the uh, comments on this post for the rest of the day and interact with you. So, um, Yes, we'll see you in 2019. No. <laughs> <laughs>